My name is Dory, and this is my 2001 GMC short bus. Come check it out. <laughs> We're gonna start with showing you the outside of the bus first. So the bus came with two undermount uh, storage bins. This is one of them. They're both located on the front half of the bus. This one I just used to hold old extension cords and stuff that I don't want to bring inside and get the inside all muddy. And the other side just holds my car batteries. So on the roof of my school bus, I have 200 watts of Renogy solar and the chimney for my wood stove that I used to keep warm and toasty. So my door setup looks like a normal school bus door from the outside, but it actually has a deadbolt and this little ring pole that I use, and it's fused together so that it all functions as a normal door. So I don't have to deal with any kind of huge lever system, and it just makes it simpler to access this side of the bus. All right, it's cold out here, it's raining. Let's go inside and check out what I got going on. All right, so this bus and I, first began our story on Craigslist, as all good stories start. Um, the previous owner had listed it as partially converted, and by partially converted, I mean like there was spray foam hanging down from the ceiling, and the wood stove wasn't fully installed yet, and everything, like the bones, some bones were here, but they were all kind of around the place. And I later learned that she had bought it from another girl who had done the paint job and the flooring, and so when I bought it, I knew I really wanted to put my own twist on it, but also pay homage to the two girls that had had her before and, you know, passed her down the line. So what I've done is um, I installed the cabinet doors and all of the cabinet, you know, accessories inside. I installed all of the shelving, the wood stove. I made this dinette. I did all of the, all of the paneling that you see. I basically built it from an empty bus that was insulated. <laughs> Welcome to my cockpit. <laughs> um, up here we just have some really basic shoe storage, fire extinguisher, some plants that are doing really well, okay? Um, <laughs> and then just, you know, standard bus uh, accoutrements. We've got, uh, I usually put my Bluetooth speaker here. You know, some fun little widdly diddlies. I have shells from all of my travels because I love to go to beaches and collect random bones and stuff. And then behind the driver's seat, I just have all of my bath towels, dish towels, my toolbox that I access a lot, my yoga mat, and some more plants. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty much it for the cockpit. This is my dinette, which I'm very proud of. Um, it used to be one of the standard bus life, you know, slide out couches, which seemed great at first, but then in practice, you know, eating on it was really hard and like doing work on it was really hard. So one morning I woke up 5 a.m., tore it completely apart and then Frankensteined all of its pieces into the dinette you see here today. Um, and then I also discovered fun news uh, that all of the <laughs> cushions that I had perfectly fit into king size pillowcases. So I didn't even need to learn how to sew, which I'm sure my mom is really proud of. <laughs> but yeah, it's really nice to be able to like talk to people when they come and visit me and you know be able to like draw and work on this space. So it's a, a, a welcome improvement. <laughs> I got the cushions from the Fred Meyer camping section and <laughs> it comes in this big like twin size mattress and I just kind of cut them into the sizes that I needed. I <laughs> cut them with a hacksaw. <laughs> Yeah, I cut them with a hacksaw, and then all the bedding I got secondhand. Everything in here pretty much is secondhand. I'm a, I'm a goodwill fiend, for sure. So under the dinette booths, there is easy access to all of the storage. Um, so in the front, you can just pull out the basket, see whatever you need. And then if you lift up the cushions, you there's a little cubby hole that you can access the stuff that's further back into the dinette booth. So super convenient, didn't lose any storage that was underneath the couch initially. I actually think I gained more storage, um, but yeah. <laughs> this is my throne. Um, no, just kidding. <laughs> this is my composting toilet. Um, I handmade it because some composting toilets are a thousand dollars, even though it's a bucket that you pee into. So <laughs> I just went on down to the old Home Depot, bought myself a five gallon bucket and here we are. We have a nice, nice little Walmart toilet seat. 
Um, it flips up so that I can easily change out the, you know, the poop and the pee sections. I have a urine diverter that goes into a two and a half gallon jug, which is more than enough for my water loving ass. <laughs> um, and then just off to the side here, I have this little storage cubby that I keep pine shavings in, and that's what I use to sprinkle on top of my number twos <laughs> so that things don't smell bad in here. Um, because it's a small space, you know, standard toilet paper. And then I have sage and incense for when things get really hairy. Um, <laughs> Um, and then off to my off to my right here, I have my vanity, and this just stores all of my bathroom goods and also some plants. <laughs> oh, and then behind here, I found this really cool prism sticky tape at Goodwill, and it when the light casts on it, it causes a bunch of rainbows to sparkle all over my bus. But its main function is so that I can go to the bathroom with the windows open because that was really annoying. Hashtag bus life. <laughs> but yeah, so now I can now I can use my little toilet um, and not have to worry about people in a parking lot seeing me. <laughs> Okie dokie, welcome to where the magic happens. And by magic I mean nothing because I live alone and it's coronavirus. I <laughs> This is my full-size bed. Um, it's up on a platform, so I have access to the storage in the garage space here. Um, and then I can also access it from the two uh, storage doors. Um, this, is, this is my view. I have a panoramic view of the Oregon woods currently. I made this little plant shelf here on my divider. All of them died. Don't ask. I'm still bitter. I have this shelf that was designed the same way that I designed the kitchen shelves. All of my curtains are blackout curtains that just roll down when I'm ready for some privacy. And then this is my clothing storage. Um, it's just a just a box at the at the head of my bed. Um, yeah. <laughs> what else do I say? I made these two dividers because I wanted it to feel more like a separate space, like a cozy little nook that I could escape into um, and just something that was a little bit more separate from the kitchen and the dinette and the bathroom and all of that. Um, I also made this little tassel thing <laughs> out of pure boredom one Oregon day. <laughs> um, and then I think the whole reason behind the divider walls was because I found this stained glass window at a St. Vinny's for seven dollars and I was like well I have to buy the window <laughs> and <laughs> I didn't have a place to put it, so I was like, well, I'm gonna make a place to put it. <laughs> Under my counter space here, I have my 12 volt fridge. It's in a Strandvik 43 liter, and it runs off of my solar battery. Um, I can access it down low from the front here if I just know exactly where I, what I need, or if I'm doing a big grocery restock, I can hook it to this bolt in the ceiling and just really easily load everything from the top. Yeah, we just, did a grocery restock, so it's kind of full in there right now. But yeah, and then when I'm done, it just unclips, and we're ready to go. <laughs> if I could give someone looking for a bus um, one piece of advice, it would be to don't buy the first bus <laughs> that you see. I know it's exciting. I know that it's like thrilling to be inside of a bus and realize that like, this is the life I wanna lead. But just look around, make sure that the engine in the bus is a solid engine. Make sure that there's not rust or structural damage to the bus. Just really, really take your time looking for the right rig for you. Don't just jump on the first one. <laughs> Okay, so the 200 watts of Renergy Solar on the roof come down through this wall here and feed into my solar generator, which is a Rock Pals 300. Um, it has 75 amp hours of battery power and it's enough to power my lights and my fridge um, and I can recharge anything USB, AC, DC. My lighting situation so right now we're running off of this beautiful LED strip that <laughs> currently just brings all of the vibes. And then I have these little rechargeable puck lights. Um, these ones are touch sensitive and then the ones on the walls right now are just like a click sensitive. Um, and they're all rechargeable and these ones are dimmable. 
So I can really have any type of lighting I want, depending on my mood. <laughs> One of the biggest things I did to the kitchen was I, when I first moved into the bus, I installed this very narrow little apothecary shelf and then had my jars hanging down, like the jars were mounted, which was very cute, very Pinterest, but not very functional. <laughs> I couldn't access my windows very easily and it was just kind of a pain to refill my uh, dry goods. So I made these shelves. Uh, it took a, just a couple of hours measuring and cutting and painting and now I have enough room for all of my dry goods and my spices and my coffee and all of my veggies. They all fit up here. So pretty happy about that food storage. I eat pretty much plant-based, so it's really important to have a lot of fruits and veggies laying around. <laughs> all right, so again, when I first moved into the bus, it was just the countertop and the sink. So I was running off of a two burner camp stove for a little while, which for cooking big, big meals and lots of burritos. Uh, it was not very sustainable. So I went with the Flame King drop-in propane stove, um, cut a hole out, and I have not had any problems. This thing is so easy on propane. I go ham. I make breakfast, lunch, and dinner in here, coffee and tea multiple times a day, and this thing is a beast. <laughs> Oh, okay, over here I have my sink, <laughs> which is not as big as I would want it to be, but again, totally functional. Um, I just have my little hand pump over here for my water system, my dish soap, some more little plants, my soaps and sponges, and some incense um, for vibes. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, that's probably my, my whole kitchen area here. All right, so this is my this is my piece de la resistance. <laughs> I don't know why I said that, dear God. These are my cabinet doors. They're just latched shut um, for when I'm on the move. They do have the magnetic closures, but as everyone in this life knows, those don't work <laughs> at all. I have a magnet strip for all of my cooking utensils, and I made this little bag for my, uh, my pot lids and stuff. This is my water system. There's a lot of groceries shoved there right now. Um, it was a 20 gallon fresh water system, but a friend of mine recently broke one of the water jugs while they were refilling it. So I now have a 14 gallon water system. <laughs> um, these are my pantry shelves. It pretty much goes like bulk dry goods, bready things, and then some leftover cleaning supplies. Over here is my cookware and the propane tank for the stove. Again, this thing has been probably hooked up for four months now and it's sipping the propane. Flame King knows what they're doing. And then down below on the kick plate, I have my sliding pantry here. And this thing, I don't have to hook into place. It's so heavy from all of my cans of beans <laughs> that um, it never moves. And this really opened up how much food I could carry with me. So it's been one of the best things that I did to the kitchen, honestly, besides putting in the new stove, this sliding pantry. <laughs> I have put today um, probably like $11,000 into this bus total. And that's with the build, mechanics, Amazon trips, Home Depot trips, all that. <laughs> this is my skylight. Um, it really lets in a lot of light. I love it so much. Um, uh, a person that's like 6'2 or 6'3 can stand up in the bubble. My bus is a little bit on the shorter side, so it's been nice for a couple of times I've had some tall friends over and they can finally stretch their legs in the, in the skylight. But it really does bring a lot of light into the, into the space. You, you know, you'd be surprised, there's all these windows, but once it gets past a certain hour, this thing's a lifesaver. All right, welcome to my tiny, tiny hearth. This thing, is adorable, right? Adorable. Um, I want to be real with you though. This thing, not great as your only source of heat, unless you like chopping down half a rainforest every night. <laughs> this is a small space, and in order to keep this little guy going and have enough fuel for it, you have to be able to carry a lot of wood with you, and 
this model is kind of on the shorter side, so I can't just go to a gas station and pick up one of the bundles of wood that they have. So that's one thing that I would definitely change about this build is um, at least the depth of the wood stove. But I would probably look at investing in like a Chinese diesel heater or, you know, who knows, something crazy like a Wabasso. But definitely cute, definitely romantic as your only source of heat garbage <laughs> throw it away <laughs> everyone that says that they heat their 40 foot bus with a freaking tiny one stove is a liar and <laughs> they can come after me <laughs> thanks for watching my tiny home on wheels tour um just really want to hit home to all those people that are watching this you know thinking about joining bus life just do your research Make sure that your little home is going to be reliable and going to be able to take you on all of the adventures that you want to go on. <laughs> if you want to follow me and my adventures, you can. I'll link my Instagram below. Um, but yeah, safe travels. <laughs> Bye! <laughs>